Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have the very special guest. Uh, it's a very, 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 very special guest, and it's it's Michael Foreman, and he is a corporate and public speaker, and he's also an author, and he is here today to talk about a topic that you don't really hear much about, and I think it's a very important topic. And he wants to talk about the follow-up. Many people, you know, they work with clients and they're wondering why the sales aren't coming in. Well, maybe it's the follow-up. And he has a lot to say about that. So keep your ears open, listen carefully, because he has some great advice, some tools, some tips and strategies to help you get to the level where you want to be. So Michael, take it away. Tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and let's hear some of that great advice because my ears are open. I'm listening. I always want to learn. Okay, Stacey. Uh, listen, it's, uh, first of all, I'm Michael Foreman. Um, I am a military veteran of Desert Storm. I've been through uh, mortgage companies, law firms. I've worked them all. But the one thing we all have in common is sales. OK, and sales really is the gist of the game. But everybody is a salesperson from the janitor to the CEO. And one thing I start whenever I speak at corporate events or I go into a company, you know, you can't walk into a company, see the janitor and not do any. Just be polite, be respectful. You have to you have to show that respect to the janitor as well as the CEO. Because A, you don't know who he is, okay? Right. He could be the brother-in-law for all you know. And, you know, by you being bad is just not not good. Um, but but it, it's a whole series of things. You, you know, when you first enter your networking event or your one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't really make a difference. But when you're introduced to somebody, you shake their hand firmly, not like a dead fish. Um, you know, you have to look them in the eye. You have to show them that you are present. You are there. And I, I want to go into one more thing before we go into the rapport building and absolutely the follow-up. Okay. And this is really for something for the 20 somethings, the 30 somethings, maybe even the 40 somethings, but you know, the cell phone that we have turn it off, put it in your pocket, get it out of sight, okay? Because that's the number one thing. Because look, if you take that cell phone and you put it upside down on the table, what does that do? You still may see the light. You still sit here may, may, may hear a ding. But the other person, your client, knows that you're not 100% there. You're 90% there. He doesn't have or she doesn't have your full attention. And one thing you have to do is be present. You have to make sure that that client thinks that there's nobody else in the world but him or her, okay? So that's that's really, really important. And then that moves into the rapport building. Now, I'm only going to touch upon the rapport building because it is very important. You only have five seconds, a minute, three minutes, to build that rapport, and it's really important. Mm -hmm. um, so you just you know you think of think of the word form f o r m, family, occupation, recreation, and m is just a message that you really have to pick up on anything and everything that you can be on the same page as them. Yes, and family is easy. You know, hey, is is that a picture of your? son it's your grandson your daughter or is that a little league thing is that a basketball a major league anything and then right. talk about that okay but remember the one most important thing shut your mouth don't talk with me I, listen i'm an extrovert i love to talk so the mm -hmm. biggest thing that i have to do is have the other person talk because mm -hmm. the more they talk the better they feel Yes. The more the more they talk about themselves or their family, that is even more important because you're slowly but surely breaking down that wall. 
that 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 wall that that separates you from the client. Right. Now, let's say that the whole meeting, uh, it's not a networking event um, for now. It's a one on one. Mm -hmm. The meeting went really well. You walked out of that office and you said, oh, my goodness, that that meeting went so well. He's definitely going to buy. Mm -hmm. And you don't do anything and you wait for him to call you. OK, that's your first mistake. OK. Yeah. So the first thing you're going to do when you have that really good meeting is you're going to take his business card and you're going to write the date down mm -hmm. and you're going to write whatever it was about and something that you talked about. Mm -hmm. So when you go home or back to the office, you can immediately, immediately write him an email thanking him for meeting for meeting me on such and such date. We spoke about this. I'm sorry to hear your son broke his leg during soccer practice, but he'll heal and everything will be good. Okay. Right. That's all well and good. And most people just like leave it there. Yeah. But here's the, here's my secret. I've been doing this for 15 years. A handwritten thank you note. Nobody does that. Nobody yeah. does that. And and you just write the, the same information. You write down the date, why you were there, something personal, and say, I'd love to meet you for a cup of coffee and put your business card in it and mail it. And usually you give it like three days. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now nothing is better than with you sitting at your desk and they're coming around with the mail and they give you mail, mail right. that doesn't pertain to, you know, office equipment, you know, and you get that thank you note and you open it up and you say, wow, that was Michael. And, and, and we spoke about my son and that's right. So 50, only 50% 50 of the time will you get a call. Now I just want to stop that right there because about 10 years ago, I sent that thank you note and the, the woman who's a realtor was so impressed with my thank you note. She sent me a thank you note for my thank you note. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was too much. And we met for coffee and we, we had a big laugh about it. But let's say you don't get any call back mm -hmm. and you give another email. Okay. Or a phone call. Because hardly anybody likes to give that phone call, but that phone call is very important because it they they hear your voice, they hear how important they are to you. So, you 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 uh, do that email phone call. If they don't call you back and they don't email you back, eh, you start getting worried. But really, don't worry, because everybody's busy, everybody's got something to do. Okay, so you're going to give him another two or three days. Hmm. And you're going to send him, look, I just want to meet you for a cup of coffee. Uh, I think we had a, a good connection at that networking event at, during the, our sales pitch, whatever the case may be. Right. Usually, you'll get some sort of a response. Yeah. It's like, I, and that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for a response, positive or negative, a right. response. Right. And that's, you now. After going through all that, you know, I <laughs> during my mortgage days, um, there was uh, there was a thousand realtors in my county, mm -hmm. probably a thousand, and probably almost as many mortgage people. Um, but I came up with a little package, and in the package was a shot glass, and in that shot glass. Ooh, my business card, whatever. And I sent it to the realtor. I said, just give me a shot. Mm -hmm. And she she thought it was cute. You know, she goes, look, but I'm really full. I said, that's all right. That's all right. Just keep me on your list. You, know, you have your three people. In case one of them falter, think of me. And I put enough information or that they were that important to me that I'm, I kept in, in, in their mind. Yeah. So... That's what you do. So the when they finally call you and you say, look, I just want to meet you for a cup of coffee. That's all. And when you meet them for a cup of coffee, 
you don't talk business. You don't talk, you don't talk about your product. You don't talk about anything. You don't talk about, say, how's your son's leg? Oh. I the, the the soccer is you know it's really going to be a tough sport. I know he's nine years old. Is he going to miss soccer? You know whatever. Yeah. Okay. And then you say you know it, what what um he sells widgets whatever. Say you know what how what can I do to refer you? What can how can I be your best salesperson? Right now notice. I haven't said anything about what I do, about mm -hmm. what I sell, or how he can buy from me. Nothing. It's all about giving. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you just give, give, give. Because eventually, it's all going to come around to you. Mm -hmm. But you have to remain consistent. And, you know, you you have to really just just wait the time. You have to be patient. Okay, right. sales, look, unless you're in that buy, sell immediately, you know, I sell tires and the guy's going to come in and he's going to buy four tires. Okay, mm -hmm. that's instantaneous. But generally speaking, if you're in corporate, you're not going to sell on the first, the first meeting. Sometimes right. not even the second meeting. Right. Okay, you have to show them, show yeah. them that they are so important to you and you're going to give them the best service absolutely possible. Right. Now, let's say that you make the sale. What do you do? Okay, well, you have to make sure that you get all their information mm -hmm. so you can follow up with them or follow them on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, right. And Instagram. And a lot of the 40 somethings say, What? You know, I have to do what? You know, and it's just it doesn't take a lot of time. And but more or less, you'll you'll have you'll begin to get a lot of, of, of uh followers and things like that. But yeah, you're not you're not connecting with them just so you're making a connection. Okay, you're building relationships. Okay, you're not just building clients. Mm. And that is probably the most important thing that you have to remember. Okay. I, I want to build a relationship with you. I'm not just not just buying and selling. Right. So you have to keep all that in mind. And if you have a newsletter, that's fine. Put them into your newsletter email, whatever, you know, and send it out once a quarter, whatever, keeping in touch. But right. nothing is going to keep in touch like you. Send them an email once a month. Mm -hmm. Send them a, a, another, not thank you card, but another thing in the mail. Just keep both, yeah. you know, eventually, you know, I got up where I was sending about 50 mail in, uh, items. You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, this is going to be too much. <laughs> but if you look at the other side say look well, what am i getting right and you see well you know what that's actually worth it mm -hmm. and you know when you're going to a networking event now everything that i just spoke about still is true yeah okay but here's the difference let's say in a networking event and there are usually tables around people milling around you mm -hmm. walk up to a table and you don't talk. You listen. You listen for the conversation. Yeah. And if it's a conversation that you can be a part of, then you can wait a little bit, wait for your time and inject some. Right. Okay. If not, you're still, you haven't said anything. You can very politely bow out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the worst thing in a world that you can do now, first, always remember your business cards. Always remember because people forget them all the time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's like a number one mistake. Okay. Yeah. I, I was at a table one time and a guy came up. There's about five of us at the table. And we were talking. He came up and handed out his business card. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. How you doing? Uh, I'm Mike. Um, just uh, I sell whatever. And, you know, listen, I have, let me have all of your cards. I'll get back in touch with you 
you know, by this evening. And he walked away. And everybody looked around the table, picked up this his card, and threw it out. <laughs> okay? Yeah. You have to treat your business cards like they're money. Right. Don't you know just hand them out to everybody. First of all, everybody doesn't want your business card. Exactly. Okay. Because when you get home from a show, you have all these bags of things and everything, and you don't <laughs> want your business. Oh, what the, come on, you know, say, like, okay, this stuff is for my kids. Uh, oh, I can use this, you know, mm -hmm. but you don't. Okay. So now you go and you have your conversation. You're building that rapport with somebody. Right. And if you're doing your job correctly, mm -hmm. they're going to ask you for your business card. Right. Okay. Now, if you go to a three or four hour event, here's my breaking point. You shouldn't hand out more than 10 business cards. Okay. Okay. Because how many people can you actually speak with? Right. And have a decent conversation. The whole idea with a networking event is not getting as many as possible and trying to follow up because that makes your follow up all the more difficult. Yes. You can't turn a business card over, look at the date, the what the networking event and what you talked about, because you didn't talk about anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a blanket. And you know, you you've you've received those emails after mm -hmm. a networking event. You're like, who is the who is he? You know, who, I don't know. Delete, delete, <laughs> delete, delete. You know, okay. So it, it's 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 fun. Um but there's a few things that you really have to remember going to a networking event. And this is good for the beginner mm -hmm. to the seasoned salesperson. Right. Make a networking event a bi-weekly thing. Mm -hmm. Put it in your calendar. I'm going to this and this and this. And put it in your calendar and go. Okay? Right. Because if it becomes that you do it by rote and you say okay look i have these people the next time i'm going to take care of these people and you'll see it's a lot more organized right and i say i say organized <laughs> because you have to stay organized yeah after the first the first networking event it's easy yeah you have a bunch of business cards i don't know how many you receive you only gave out 10 but you have you know 15 20 yeah. And okay, okay. <clears throat> you're you're wait a second, it's all my train of thought. Um you just you just have to be able to put it into your calendar and just and just go. And the first networking event you go to, you're not gonna do well. You just mm -hmm. not you can't go expecting to get business. Right. You can go expecting to be a referral source. Mm -hmm. or a bunch of businesses right okay but now the second one you get a little bit better the third one you're a little bit better okay and so after a while you're saying oh, i recognize him oh i know him uh right. okay well this is this is pretty easy mm -hmm. and you start getting better right and, and really that's that's how you do it that's really good advice. You know, I think uh, a lot of people, you know, actually do the business card where they hand it out to everybody. And that's exactly, you know, I laugh because it's so true. People just throw it in the garbage. They're like, you know, what am I going to do with this? You know? Yeah. You yeah. All the time. It's true. And if you go to those events, you know, if you're new to it, then the easiest thing you do is say, hey, Stacy, do me a favor. Come with me to this networking event because I haven't really gone before. Okay. If you do that, first of all, I say never do that. Never go mm -hmm. with somebody. Always go alone. Okay. If you do that, split up. Mm -hmm. Because let's say you don't. Let's say you and I go to a networking event. We right. go up to the first table of five people. Right. We don't have five people. I have two people. You have three people. Or I have three people, you have two people. Right. So that just limited our table just to those people. So I don't know 
if I can build that rapport with that other person. Right. So you should really, really go alone. And you see, you know, you may see a customer there. Mm -hmm. You may want to network with your customers. And, right. you know, there's always those little shows. Um, you have networking groups that I used to, I used to uh, have my own networking groups in New York. I had mm -hmm. two of them, one New York, one New Jersey, about 30 businesses. And once a year, we would have a networking event at, mm -hmm. at a hotel gala room. Right. And um, they would invite all their clients and their friends, and it would be a big thing. Yeah. Okay. So if you network with your clients and your, your friends, it, it really is, is much better. Yeah. No, and I you agree. get used to it a whole lot easier. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about like when, when people, when you meet someone for the first time and is it good to give them your pitch, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so I'm from this company and, you know, I do this and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, or is there a specific way to approach somebody for the first time where you're, you want to make that connection with that person because you want to, you know, uh, be able to follow up with them and maybe close a sale with them. Um, you know, what are some of the the mistakes and what are some of the right ways to, to, do, you know, to go about it when you're, let's say you're at a convention or you're at your, you are somewhere and, you know, you, you see the person, you know, you know, you could do business with this person, you know, some people come up and they give them their, their whole story. You know, I'm so-and-so I'm from this company. We do this amount of business and da, 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 we sell this product and it's been doing this and it's been doing that. You know, what do you think about that? Well, for one thing, never use your elevator pitch when you're meeting a person one on one in some big room. Mm -hmm. An elevator pitch is, is 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 exactly what it says. Think of yourself in an elevator. Yeah. Now it said they tell you a thirty second elevator pitch. That mm -hmm. is so wrong. Mm -hmm. It's a five second pitch. Okay. Maybe ten. And the whole idea is for them to ask you a question. Well, what do you mean? Or how does that work? Or And then you can go into your secondary, which is about 20 seconds. Okay. Okay. So when you walk in, you, you meet with somebody, you don't automatically give your elevator pitch because mm -hmm. that sounds like an elevator pitch. Okay. You don't want to sound like you have this thing rehearsed and right. you go around just giving your sales pitch. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what do you do? You know, hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm Michael Foreman. I'm a, I'm a corporate speaker. Really? Wh wh where do you speak? Well, I speak at corporate events. I equip, I equip professionals with uh, keynote speeches, off-brand speeches, workshops, things like that. It's really, it's really a fun thing. What do you do? Oh, I do this, this, and this, and this. As, you know what? That sounds very interesting. Um, you know what? Do you think you can give me your business card and then I'll contact you afterwards and maybe we can grab a cup of coffee? Very simple, very conversational, very everything. Nothing is rehearsed. Right. Okay. Because as soon as you come out with that rehearsed sentence or two sentences, they're going to know. Yeah. They're going to know. That was my ring. Um. They're going to, they're going to know that this is oh, okay. You just, you just, you say the same thing to everybody. Okay. I don't want that. I never want that. And I just take a few extra minutes with this business card. It's okay. They, oh, you know what? You're, you're local. Would you mind if I contact you and we'll stop off for a cup of coffee? Right. No, that's great. And if you see that they're just even a little bit too far mm -hmm. in that hotel where you probably are going to a networking event, Say, mm -hmm. oh, you know what? How about afterwards uh, we just grab a drink or grab a cup of coffee? I, I really don't drink. So I always say coffee, yeah. you know, so it's one of those things. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it depends on you. Just, if you have to feel out your your client or your prospective client. Right. You know? and, and that's how you go around and do it. But that 30 second elevator speech, you know, you can do a whole workshop on building your 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 elevator speech when it really shouldn't be that difficult. Right. It's just 
five seconds of bloop. And then <laughs> you try all you're trying to do, the, your sole purpose is to say, well, what is that? Or ask them, having them ask you a question, you know, and you can follow it up. So that's the biggest thing. I like that. I like that. You know, I, I find that, you know, sometimes you know, people, you know, how they they wait a couple of days to follow up or they might wait till a week to follow up. You know, how long of a gap should you wait and then follow up? When's the best time to follow up if you want really great results? That night. That night. That night. And that night or the next morning, you write that handwritten thank you note. Mm -hmm. And then you wait about three days mm -hmm. unless you get a response before then. Okay. Three days, you do another email or phone call. And then another three days, unless you get a response. Right. And I told you, positive or negative, that's fine. As long as you get a response. Right. Um, and if you don't get a response by the that week, week and a half, you're never going to get one. Right. Okay. So you don't just throw their card away. You take their, their information, you put it into your CRM and yeah. you, your mailing list and everything else. And they're on it until they say drop until they, they don't want to be on. It. Okay. Right. So it's a whole, it's a process. There are people, you know, going into your CRM and going out of your CRM. It's like a, a rotating door. Right. Okay. But that's sales. That's yeah. sales. And, you know, you have to be, I would say, an extrovert uh, in order to be in sales. And somebody somebody else asked me, what would happen if an introvert was really interested in doing sales work? Yeah. Uh, first thing is tell them not to. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, but they really want to. So, okay. So, all right. So now let's say that she really wants to get out there. Okay. You heard of a ghostwriter with a book? Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to have almost the same thing doing it in sales. Okay. Right. You're going to have somebody with you, with you doing your introductions, doing your talking, because an introvert really won't come out and talk. Yeah. Okay. They're good at the listening part. All right. But they right. really aren't going to talk. So yeah. you, can, you need like a wingman. Mm -hmm. to start your conversations yeah right and to do your linkedin your facebook your instagram all that kind of stuff they're going to do all that for them right okay so all they're going to do is sit back and take the credit mm -hmm. that's really and really if it's a friend that wants to do it that's fine um if you have to pay that person a little something it, that's fine too right okay but that's just for them to break out of the shell and more times than not, the introvert will break out of the shell. Yeah. Not completely, you know, right. not like, hello, I'm here, you know, yeah. but they're, they're going to break out of the shell and they're going to go. And for them, I have three words. Practice, practice, practice. Yes. Like in anything else, you need to practice. 100%. 100%. Yep. I actually had a client who was an introvert and I actually coached him and we practiced and we practiced and we practiced and he actually came out of his shell. Now he didn't come out of his shell a hundred percent, but he came out of his shell a lot where he could speak in front of a camera. He was able to express himself where before he was very nervous and, and, and very like in his shell, so to speak. And with the practice and with, with boosting him up and, and, you know, pointing out all the strengths that he had, he actually was slowly able to get out of that shell. So yes, practice does make perfect. Definitely. That and that's great. And I'll tell you about one, one somebody that I coached, which was an introvert, which I really thought, listen, they did great. They sat in front of the camera. They weren't nervous and everything. The first networking event, I went with him. I met him there. Mm -hmm. And he clammed up. Didn't uh, say a word. Didn't move. Became a wallflower and everything. I'm like, well, you know, there's three months right out the window. You know, I, 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 I'm like, <laughs> okay, why? He goes, I, I, I don't know. I said, okay. 
we started too big. You know, uh -huh. we should have started with a little networking group function. Yeah. You know, or or a, a chamber of commerce function. Yeah. And, and that will, you know, I, that 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 would have been more better. More better? Hey. Really good language. Um that that would be that would be better for my you know, okay. Yeah. Um but and he's he since you know came out of his shell, did very well, but it took a, a good six months. Right, right. And that's actually a short period of time for a, for an introvert. That's actually really, really good, you know. I got him into the 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 chamber of commerce events and things like that. And I had him be a part of it, mm -hmm. not just a customer. And that really helped. Now I have a question for you. So I have seen many salespeople where they are very aggressive. They do the follow-up, but they are aggressive and they just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And I find that sometimes when, when they, when they, uh, they don't settle, you know, and they're so aggressive, you know, it, it could turn a client off. What, what is the borderline? Because a, 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 a salesperson has to be a little bit, you know, that, you know, you, you got to try to push and edge the, the other person on gain their trust and, and then really try to convince them, you know, through the follow-ups that this is going to be beneficial for them, explain to why and so forth. But, you know, what's too aggressive? Like, what is the best way when you're doing your follow-up? Because I've seen many salespeople, I feel, cross the borderline. And I think that sometimes that turns clients off completely when they could have closed the sale if they did it a better way with the client. Well, you know, it's it's really a feeling. You have to, when you're sitting down with somebody and if you're too aggressive, you can almost tell by their body language that you better tone it down, otherwise you lost. Yeah. And when I, when I say you're following it up with an email, then a thank you note, and then three days later, another email, you know, you have to really feel the client out to see whether or not you're coming on too strong. Right. Okay. So now your email can, you know, they may say something like, uh, I'm going on vacation. It might be Monday. And like, well, I'm going on vacation next week. So I'm getting things ready. Uh, give me a call later on. Mm -hmm. And that's the client's way of just pushing you out. Yes. Okay. And an aggressive salesperson says, well, you know, what? let me get, let me meet with you before you leave. And just, and there's two rules of thought. One salesperson would say, you know, that's a great idea. Get them before they leave. And I'm like, right. no, I, I would let them go. And I say, look, okay. I'll schedule an appointment with you the week after next. How's mm -hmm. Tuesday or Wednesday? Right. And it, it, if it's good, then, that, then it's good. And then what will happen is that that Monday when they're back, I won't call them. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. So that Tuesday, I'll just call them back or send an email. Hi, this is Michael. Hope you had a great time in, on your vacation. Uh, we had set a time for a Tuesday at three o'clock or Wednesday at three o'clock. Um, look, looking, for, not giving them an out, looking forward to seeing you then, you know, something like that. And that yeah. to me is just enough, right. not too aggressive, but not passive enough of saying, oh, okay, you know, going off. I'll, I'll talk to you when you get back. Right. You have to set that time. Yeah. If you set a time, then they're more apt to believe it. And you're sending them, look, we made it for Wednesday at three o'clock, send an email. Right. I'm just confirming that we set it for Wednesday at three o'clock. I like that. And that's, that's that's how you do it. I like that. Now, what are some of the some tools and tips that you like to give people that you know? I'm sure you get common questions. I'm sure you 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 hear people you know say, well, you know, I do this and this and this, and you know, I always get this answer from people, and you know. And I don't know how to approach it because sometimes after selling for so long, people will come up with the same responses. You know, they'll come up with the, you'll, you know, you, you know, when you're being fed a line because they just want to get rid of you, you know, and you're in, you're trying to close the deal, but you know, these people might be on the borderline or they might've had a bad experience with something similar. So they're iffy, 
And so instead of being honest with the salesperson, they kind of just want to, you know, pick up and run. So, and then after a while, you'll probably hear the same, the same, you know, st statements, you know, the same, the same lines. And when you know it's a line, you know, so what are some tools and tips when, when people are kind of, you know, trying to brush you off and you, you've heard these lines before and before and before, how do you approach that in, in, in a right way? Like, you know, is there a specific way to do that, you know, to approach them when you know they're just, you know, they may have had a bad experience, maybe, you know, or something, uh, they're doubtful, maybe they haven't gained your trust yet. You know, how do you approach that so you could actually maybe possibly win the sale over? Well, the, the, the biggest thing that I can think of, uh, the biggest response what the customer would say, well, you know what? Let me think about it. Mm -hmm. And that's how they're trying to get you out of the office. And yeah. really your response is, well, what do you have to think about? Right. You know, here, and then you can just lay out the the, the, the pros and the cons and say, mm -hmm. look, you know what? You may have had a bad experience with this other company, but I'm telling you between our customer service, the way we treat all of our our clients it's nothing but a win-win situation and our price moderately priced we're not too much we're not too little but you know what is there really to think about because it's something you need and yes. something that your office needs but and you i can deliver it to you on such and such day you know what do you what else would you have to think about <clears throat> right and they may go into another excuse or not, but when that happens two or three times, it's they're really not interested and they don't know how to tell you no. Right, right. Okay, that's where you have to say, you know, you know, say, okay, you know what? Um, this was a, a very good meeting and I think I explained everything to you because people will respond to you more easily through an email because they don't have to see you. Yes. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'll just, I'll just send you and my follow up from that meeting. Well, I'll lay everything out and say, you know, you, you told me you had to think, you know, what do you think? Right. So that's all. There's not, a, there's not an answer for everything. Yeah. You just, the more seasoned you get, the more you can feel those questions. And they're not always the same answer. Right. Right. Very true. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you really wanted to emphasize on some important aspects, what do you really want the listeners to understand from our conversation today? Listen, you can meet any client. You can have a great deal. You, you can have fun. You can uh, talk shop. You can do whatever. You can build that rapport. You can have a great thing. You can and they can be left with the greatest feeling in the world. But if you don't follow up properly, you lost the sale. Right. Okay. Because it's not like, well, look, as long as we spoke about it and talked about it, I'm going to close the sale. No, it's wrong. Okay. Yeah. You have to follow up, follow your training, follow up, say, look, you know what? And I just want to say it's in the book. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had a somebody, a CEO of a company, invite me in for a workshop. And before I got there, everybody had a copy of the book. He was sitting there because you said to, to keep this as, as a guide. So that's what we're doing. I said, right. that's perfect. That's perfect. Because now I can refer to it and everybody can follow along. Right. So, so if you keep it as a guide, and if you actually follow it through, read the book, follow it through, it will teach you everything that has to be taught. Whether right. you're an introvert or a seasoned extrovert, there's always something you can pick up from the book. Sold on Amazon, I just want to tell you. Um, but it's it really, it works out. It took me a, a while to really figure out exactly the information. Um but it's, it's really good. There's no fluff. Right. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? Well, uh, like I said, uh, I'm a keynote speaker, uh, a breakout session, but more importantly, I do workshops 
for businesses. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I can do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but in a group, you know, mm -hmm. so because a lot of companies will won't have me in to do a workshop, but want me to work with their five salespeople. Right. Okay. So, so, but when I come in for a workshop, here's the, here's the kicker. I say, okay, how many salespeople do you have? I have 10 salespeople. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many support people do you have? What do you mean support? Well, who answers your telephone? Who's the receptionist? Who's everybody and anybody that deals with anybody that wants your product? Right. That, that 10 moved up to 30. Mm -hmm. I said, well, those are the people I want in the workshop. Right. And it's really, it's, it's an amazing thing. And it's in the beginning, it's like, they're all like, yeah, yeah. What, what is this guy going to tell me? What's this yeah, guy yeah. tell me? You know, and within five minutes in, into the program, they're listening. Yeah. They're listening, you know, because this, this information is, is so good and you can use it the next day. Mm -hmm. And what I, if you use all this information properly, you'll build up your bottom line by the next month. Wow. Very impressive. Very impressive. Now you have some things on your website that you give away. Can you tell us about that? Well, I, I, what I, what the most important part of the website, first of all, it tells you all about the networking, about the leadership talks, um, the different podcasts that I've been on. Um, my book sales are on there, uh, but there's a contact form. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that contact form comes directly to me. Uh, and I will answer you by the end of the day. And okay. it's really, some people just want that little one-on-one -on -one and other, last time was, was the CEO. He goes, look, I have a little company it's worth $22 million. I'm right. like, that's a little company, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, he was, he was a regular guy. He was just, right. you know, just wanted to see what his problem was. Right. And I told him he didn't have a problem. He mm -hmm. just had to have to nurture his salespeople. Right. Now, where can we find your website? Uh, my website is michaelaforman.com. michaelaforman.com. And where, wherever you can get hold of the web, uh, the uh, internet, that's how you can get hold of me. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 you can look look for me on LinkedIn, on Instagram, Facebook, and all that because I I post and I do uh, certain things about leadership, about about networking, and I do a little bit. But all of that will lead you back to my website because that's where I can give you the most information. That's where I can be your relationship. And not yeah. a client person. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. Before we go, is there anything else you'd like to add to our conversation that we we? Well, all I can say is that you, when you go to the networking events, just remember those few things. You know, go alone. Don't forget your business cards because that is a fatal flaw. Mm -hmm. Make networking a scheduled event. People say, well, I don't know very, very many scheduled events. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there's websites, there's meetup. There's, there's, everybody's always having a networking event because everybody's trying to get business. Right. So there's, there's always something. So yeah. always, you know, you can do it. You can do it from the extrovert to the seasoned, uh, intro, from the introvert to the seasoned extrovert. That's how it is. And that's amazing. how it is. I love it. This has been amazing, Michael. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You provided us with a wealth of information and I really enjoyed this conversation. You know, this is a topic that I think is a very important topic. I think it's something that's overlooked. And I think a lot of people sometimes go about it the wrong way. And it's a vital aspect in closing a sales and making profit for yourself and for your company. So, you know, thank you so much for coming out and, and sharing your time and your information. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. 
You're most welcome, Stacy. And I'll, you know, uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Same here. I look forward to seeing you as well. Have a great day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.